In my last video, I built a 3D printed Delta robot platform. I wanted to be able to use it for more applications, so I've given it legs and inverted it. This is the most common orientation for Delta robots, as it allows them to be used for pick and place applications, which is something I wanted to play around with. The simplest design I could think of for the legs was to have three pieces of aluminium tube press fitted to 3D printed brackets on the base of the robot. To prevent the legs from sliding on smooth surfaces, I 3D printed some feet with rubber inserts. It was almost ready to start playing with, but first I needed to update the code so it could deal with the inverted inverse kinematics. It's now moving in the correct direction and working properly. As some of you may have guessed, the rotating end effector doesn't pick up things very well. So we're going to need some new end effectors to do all the things I want. I want to do some drawing accuracy tests and have the robot interact with a phone or tablet. So it needs to be able to hold a stylus, pen or pencil or other thin object. This end effector is pretty simple with three adjustable bolts and a tapered hole that clamps the object into place. This actually mounts inside of the rotating end effector allowing the clamped object to rotate as well. This made me think I could give it a sharp screw and play a knife game with it. This seemed like a bad idea, so I did it immediately. Now stand back, I gotta practice my stabbing. <laughs> no, please, help, stop it, please! Ages ago, I was browsing Thingiverse for robot grip designs, and a three-finger design really grabbed me. I've had it printed off and sitting on my side ever since. Um, but now it has a use on my Delta robot. I considered using an electromagnetic gripper and I was really attracted to the idea. The last gripper I designed was a syringe vacuum gripper, and it really sucks. This was the most complicated gripper to design because it required designing a mechanism to actuate the syringe and making moulds so I could cast a silicon suction cup. The syringe plunger is actuated by an MG995 servo with a 3D printed arm to increase the travel of the plunger. This allows the syringe to draw in about 7 millilitres of air which provide a good amount of suction without putting too much strain on the servo. An important aspect of the design is that the servo arm is in line with the syringe when retracted. This means that the force from the plunger trying to return to its original position because of the vacuum will be directly through the shaft of the servo, not through the gears and the motor, thus not requiring much current to maintain its position. The suction cup needed to be made out of a soft material so that it would deform to the surface of the target object and create an airtight seal. Silicon seemed to be the obvious choice for this, so I brought some one-to-one -one soft silicon for mould making. I designed and 3D printed moulds for the suction cup, checked they would fit together without any gaps for the silicon to leak out of, then mixed up a batch of silicon and poured it in and left it to cure. Silicon doesn't really stick to much once cured and is very elastic so relatively easy to remove from the moulds. I removed the flash from where the mould halves met and it was ready to use. 
All the CAD STL files for the syringe actuator and the molds are available on my Thingiverse, link in the description. So why use a vacuum gripper? Let's start with the advantages. The end effector is soft so it shouldn't damage anything it picks up. It will deform to the curvature of the surface so it can pick up various shaped objects. Once the plunger is retracted, the servo draws minimal power to hold it. Controlling the gripper is easy as it just uses a regular hobby servo. There's no noise from pumps to maintain the vacuum. There isn't any size limit for what can be picked up as long as it fits under the robot and isn't too heavy. The end effector is very light as it's only a suction cup and some tubing. It can even pick and place liquids. Now for some of the disadvantages. It can only pick up smooth, non-porous materials that it can form an airtight seal with. If there's a small leak, there's no way to maintain the suction, so the object will fall from the gripper after a short time. If an object is not picked up from above its centre of mass, then it may rotate and pry itself free from the suction cup. It does not work in a vacuum, but to be honest, you're probably not going to be using it in a vacuum anyway. Now onto some real world testing. First, I wanted to see how much weight it could lift, so I have a padlock on some digital scales and we'll see how much the weight is reduced before the suction cup becomes unstuck from it. It managed to lift almost 300 grams. I then repeat this a few times to ensure the results were consistent. However, it's worth noting this is the maximum static load and if the robot tried moving with such a heavy load, it would very likely shake loose from the gripper. Another important aspect is how well does it hold the vacuum and therefore how long can it hold an object before it will fall from the gripper. In theory, it has a perfect seal it will hold indefinitely. To test this, I picked up a smooth metal weight and timed how long it was held for. It ended up holding for over 24 hours before it fell from the gripper. As you can see, when it can't make a good seal, the object falls from it very quickly. I'll now leave you with some demos of the Delta Robot and its grippers. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and if you want to see more of my work, hit the subscribe button. Feel free to leave any questions in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer them.